Today, we're going to talk about present census. Let's get into it. So what's the difference between a present sensor and a regular PIR motion sensor? The motion sensor uses infrared, which means that it's using... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, before we get into that, why should you buy one? Why, why should you get a present sensor instead of a motion sensor? For me, I think it's because you can read the distance. You know how far away something is, and you can do some really cool automations based on that. Let me show you. So in an attempt to save my TV from absolute abuse from a two-year-old, I've wired up the presence sensor so that it will pause the TV if they get too close, and then as they move away, it will resume the TV. In the attempt that this will hopefully train them in some Pavlovian way not to stand too close to the TV, I was always told when I was a kid, don't stand so close to the TV, you'll get square eyes. This automation has actually worked really well and the TV's still in fairly good shape. Anyway, back to the comparison. And heat to determine whether you're actually present or not, whereas the present sensor uses millimeter wave, so it can typically report back a lot quicker so it's every half of a second roughly that you'll get a report back from the present sensor whereas on the motion sensor it has a literal cooldown so it has a buffer of around 15 seconds before it can report back that there's actually no motion the motion sensor is battery powered and the present sensor has a wired connection the only real difference that that makes is that you have to change the battery and the motion sensor every now and again and you're also more constrained where you can put the present sensor because it needs to be near a power outlet. I found that I typically don't have to change the battery and the motion sensor very often. It's, it's between one year and two years depending on where you've placed it and what it's detecting. The motion sensor will detect motion directionally and what I mean by that is if you were to point the motion sensor facing away from you it would not detect that you were there. However, the present sensor has a scattered detection, meaning that if you were to turn the present sensor so it's facing away from you, it would still detect that you are actually there. And finally, because of the way that they work, the motion sensor tends to have a sharper attenuation, which means that when it gets to a wall, it's not gonna go through the wall. Uh, whereas the present sensor, I've noticed that if you have walls that are just plasterboard stud walls it will actually detect if you're on the other side of that wall which is obviously not great if you want to use it to control things like lights and stuff like that you don't want them coming on as you walk past the room but not in the room this gives you some idea of the sensitivity of the motion sensor and the present sensor you can see at 1203 and 50 seconds the motion sensor detected that i was there and at 12.03 and 50 seconds, the present sensor detected I was there. That's the exact same time when I came into the room, so it was pretty snappy for the present sensor to detect me. And there's these little blocks throughout where the motion sensor seems to think that I'm not there. That's because I'm either sat or stood fairly still at my desk and the motion sensor isn't particularly good at recognizing small differences whereas the present sensor is millimeter wave, so it detects very, very small movements. So it's, it's really good at figuring out that I'm still in the office. And you can see when it cleared as well, when I left the office, there was 12, 25 and 47 seconds for the motion sensor and 12, 25 and 25 seconds for the present sensor. So what's that, a full 22 seconds longer it took the motion sensor to realize that I was actually not in the office anymore. Even though the motion sensor is pretty snappy at detecting whether I'm in the office, whether I'm out of the office, it still had those gaps where it seemed to think that I wasn't in the office. And the fix for that is to add a delay. So when it stopped detecting presence, or it stopped detecting motion, to wait for a minute before turning the lights off, which obviously means you add on that minute to the 20 seconds, and now it's a minute and 20 seconds after you've left the office when the lights decide to turn themselves off. And I have some other automations. I have a whole video, you should, you should go check it out, on how to let you know that a meeting is about to start when you're not in the office. 
And obviously that only works if it knows that I'm not in the office. If it thinks I'm in the office, but I'm actually downstairs making a coffee or eating a Cornetto, then I might actually miss the start of my meeting because it's gonna notify me in the office and it's not gonna notify me where I actually am. So what do you think? Have I convinced you that a presence sensor is better than a motion sensor? Well, let me show you the problems that I had with my presence sensors as well. There's the problem with them being able to read presence through a stud wall, which was not ideal for my purposes. There's the issue around potentially having to have them plugged in if that's a problem for you. There's also other issues around present sensors as well. Let's let's dive into some of the details. The, the, basically the positioning is really important and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if you watch the target distance here when it's flat on the desk, it's absolutely all over the place. And that didn't seem to actually improve when I put it upright on the desk. I thought, hey, maybe if it's facing the correct way, I'd get better readings. When I went and put it on top of the unit, it actually stabilized the readings quite a lot. And I think the reason for that is some sort of electromagnetic interference around all of the stuff that I have on my desk. Even when I tweaked the radar sensitivity, there was still massive fluctuations. There's a ton of settings that you can tweak on these present sensors, the radar sensitivity being one of them, which should just be how sensitive it is to small movements. The range, both min and max, you're gonna to have to play around with this to make sure that you get the ideal range that works well for you. Again, if you have something like plasterboard walls that you don't want to read through, then you're gonna to have to tune it to make sure that you're not picking up stuff on the other side of the wall. There's the detection delay as well, which is just simply how quick it will react to presence. And then the fade time as well. So if the target distance jumps over what you've specified as the maximum range, this is effectively how long of a cool off period you have before it determines that there's no presence. Yes, there are other presence sensors available. There's the Akara FP1, the, the fantastic everything presence one as well. Those are both much more expensive than the present sensor that I've been using. The present sensor I've been using is much, much cheaper. You can pick the motion sensors and the present sensors up on AliExpress for less than £10, whereas the other present sensors tend to go for more like £40 or £50. Are you using a present sensor for automations? Let me know down in the comments what you're using it for. If you enjoyed the video, hit like, subscribe. I'll catch you next time.